Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be taking a look at this review copy I was sent of the Forbidden Caverns of Archaea, which is a classic fantasy mega dungeon by Greg Gillespie. Now this is the second mega dungeon that uh, Greg has done. The first one is Barrow Maze, which I reviewed previously. Uh, you can check that out right up here. And this one is in a similar vein, although there's some really interesting tweaks on the mega dungeon format that I want to look at. So this was a, a print-on-demand version from DriveThruRPG. It's uh, pretty solid, has this nice uh, orange spine, very reminiscent of a lot of old school D&D. Pretty solidly constructed. Haven't had any problems with things falling out. There's a little bit of cracking, but you know, nothing that, uh, wor that makes me worried that it's gonna fall apart. Um, has a lot of great art, just like the previous one, Barrow Maze. He's really put in the time and the money to hire a lot of really excellent old school artists. So the general structure of this mega dungeon is that uh, like the previous one, it comes with a hex crawl of a you know, region, but really it focuses on one particular part of it. Uh, here is our actual mega dungeon. Here's where it's going to take place. And, uh, Here's the town where everything comes from, East Dale. So um, the Caverns of Archaea is in the middle of this giant blasted wasteland. There's some backstory about an ancient race that used to have a big city here. It's all been destroyed and reduced to rubble and caverns and tombs that you can raid. And the way that this is set up is so, such that you can resupply and rest in this town and then every day head out to here and then back again. Uh, it recommends that you use this place in the middle, which is the Dragon's Teeth Henge, as a waypoint. And it's a dangerous area where there are where monsters may show up. So it makes traveling there and back again a more dangerous prospect than Barrow Maze. Of course, if you're DMing this, you can simply take that out and put the town closer if you feel like it. We have a general layout of the surrounding region. Although most players are going to ignore the majority of this and just focus on the Mega Dungeon but it's, uh, it doesn't take up too much of the book, along with the different gods that we have here. And Eastdale, our main town that we're going to be using as a station uh, going to and from the Mega Dungeon. So like Barrow Maze, I think this generally supposes that you're gonna be doing an open table situation where you have players coming and going, and uh, each time that you get a bunch of players together, they can do a raid on the dungeon, get some treasure, explore a new area, and then come back again. It's a great format for if you have a lot of players who want to take turns running and especially or take turns playing, and especially if you have very um, goal-oriented players or players that are very proactive and have ideas about where they want to go next and what they want to explore. So it really allows the GM to uh, let the players plan because most of the dungeon, like in Barrow Maze, is quite easy to run. We have some personalities. We have. Uh, the Horde of the Rotting Hand. So one nice thing about this mega dungeon is that uh, the factions are not just undead. Whereas in Barrow Maze, it was pretty much all undead. In this, we have a wide variety of uh, things like kobolds, naga tea, lizard men, froglings, ogres, all your assortment of uh, fantasy evil races, right? Humanoid races, bugbears, hobgoblins, and so on. And while all of these factions are... Os os ostensibly allied for the most part. Um, they have a lot of inherent conflict between each other, which is mapped out with these conflict maps. So uh, you can very easily turn them against each other. In, in Barrow Maze, since most of the monsters are um, undead, there's not a lot of negotiating and a lot of uh, talking that you can do in the dungeon. Whereas this is very different. Most of the monsters are intelligent and they belong to different factions. So playing factions against each other and negotiating is much more of a focus. So that can be really nice for someone who wants more of that. General overview of the area, along with some special hex encounters. And, and here we have one thing that I want to uh, point out right away, which is encounters and motivations. So here's your different factions and how they're related to one another. Um, but when you run into different tribal patrols, you have to roll on a whole bunch of tables and subtables to generate what that patrol is like. So, for example, you could roll it with this, where you have, you know, some faction is trading something to some faction for something else. So you can roll on what types of um, warbands those are, whether they're orc patrols. You can roll on, like, what 
uh, the actual composition is in terms of how many hit points they have, what weapons they have, and then this can lead to even further subtables like special creatures that are in there, uh, what their motivation types are, and so on. So that's quite a bit of rolling. There can be numerous subtables that you have to roll on. And uh, it recommends that the DM roll up a lot of that ahead of time. But I would really like to see these um, tables all put into something like Chartopia, any sort of automated online roller that does all of the work for you. I don't know if it would be terribly difficult to do that, especially if you had the PDF, you could probably take a lot of the text and put it right to Chartopia. But that way you could just hit one button and it would generate all these different um, patrols which are a lot of the main antagonists that you're going to run into while exploring this area and around the dungeon. So here's the general structure of what the dungeon looks like. Um, there's a better picture of it near the back. Let me see if I can find it here. Here we go. So basically, as you approach this area, it's a large part of this wasteland that's all sunken. There used to be a big city here, and it's all collapsed. Now there's all these mesas and uh, cliffs and there's lots of little dungeons. You see lots of little holes here and there, doors and ruins, to where all of these smaller dungeons are. Because by and large, this whole book is a whole bunch of medium-sized dungeons that are all very close together. So it's not really one big interconnected thing. It's more like um, dozens of smaller adventures. And here's a good picture of what that would look like when you're down on the floor of this canyon area. Uh, it comes with a number of rules for how to scale the sides of these cliffs if you're coming down from the outside rather than taking the main road down. Um, and the rules are fairly detailed and gritty, but I think they could be smoothed over by DMs who are, you know, didn't want to go into that much detail. We have a number of different types of entrances. Treasure types, we have the discs of Carcoon, which are a lot like those uh, slabs, those tablets that we saw in Barrow Maze, where you can find these and they add an element of chaos to the game because when you roll on them, either it's really good or really bad, kind of like a deck of many things. And we get into our, we have an, an end game. So basically there's a sort of a story that can play out over time as players explore stuff, but really it's up to the DM how much of that they want to put in there. And they can make it just a straight up exploration game if they want. So here we go, here's all of our different dungeons. So let me show you what the map looks like back here of the general region. So here's the whole canyon area, right? And so each of these little numbered or lettered areas are a different dungeon. These can range from um, three or four levels deep, like fairly large dungeons, down to ones that are just a couple of rooms. So there's a wide variety of different things you can run into here. So you can hex crawl through this area going from ruin to ruin looking for a treasure. And of course, as you explore around here, you're going to be running into other encounters. For example, those different um, monster bands of people coming and going. Uh, you're going to run into them. You may have to fight them. You may be able to negotiate them, you may be able to turn them against other factions. And there's also larger creatures like large avian predators in this area that can take you out if you stay in the open too long. So keeping an element of pressure at all times. And at the far end of this cavern ravine area we have the hellfire furnace which is a full-on volcano with the largest area that you can explore and it's kind of the end game because like barrow maze things generally get more dangerous as you go from west to east so as you get over here things get worse and worse and worse so you can control the level of difficulty by how far you go and that's to replace the standard way that uh, these games are run which is normally how deep you go is how dangerous things are so let's look at a couple of these dungeons. For example, um, there's some dungeons that are lettered A through R. Those are generally the more, the bigger, more thematic dungeons. And then the ones that are numbered tend to be on the smaller and quicker side. So for example, this one has a number of um, levels to it, right? And what's great about this is this remedies one of my complaints from Barrow Maze, which this has a lot more maps and the maps tend to be much closer to where the actual text is. So there's less flipping back and forth. By and large, the map is no more, no more than a couple pages away from where you need it to be. And there's lots of little mini maps that reduce the amount of flipping, right? Some great art by Russ Nicholson. You get the general idea here. A lot of different varieties, lots of different types of tombs. Because not all tombs, um, this was a whole city. So some of them are actual cave networks. Some of them are sewer complexes. Some of them are actual tombs that have been robbed. Some of them are parts of the old city that actually have you know rooms and hallway structures. 
and temples and so on. So uh, this is another thing that might set it apart from Barrow Maze is that there's a lot of variety in terms of the types of, of dungeons, the types of environments you're going to explore, and as I said before, the types of enemies. We have some great little isometric sketches here too, which are really helpful because they help set up um, more complicated combats when elevation is important. So I'm really digging the level of um, illustration that goes into this. So we've got some really small dungeons, as you can see here, all the way up to really big ones. Lots of great art. So getting all the way towards the end, we have the Hellfire Furnace, which is here. And this is basically a large section of the uh, city that used to be here. And uh, I guess one of my criticisms is that there are large sections of it that are basically a maze like this with nothing really in them, um, which would be quite trying to try and actually search through. If I was running this, I would probably just um, theme these types of areas as just like low crumbling walls. So it's very clear that there's nothing really important there and make the areas that are um, actually numbered, you know, raised buildings where it's very clear that there's something interesting over there to explore. Just prevent players from wandering around in these mazes for long periods of time. We got these lava rivers. Um, the Hellfire Furnace is extremely dangerous and it's for high level characters, right? Anything else is gonna get toasted by some of the um, Balors and horrible stuff running around in here. Let's look at some of the supplemental material that comes with it. Lots of pages of dungeons. I'm not even sure how many rooms there are because each of these dungeons is numbered separately. It's hard to count them up, but definitely hundreds. Okay, so getting towards the end here, here we go. We have our new character sheet, which is really great. I love the illustrations around the edges. It really digs into the theme of this mega dungeon. And we have this really cool little tracker here. I've never seen this before. Maybe this has existed previously, but it's really neat. Um, when you're running old school games, time is really of the essence. You need to track how many turns have passed because you need to check for new dangers. And this puts it all onto one wheel. So for example, you know, roll, when you come across a sword, then that means you know, check for an encounter, and these can be checking for cavens. You have torches to check for when lights are gonna go out, lanterns for when lanterns are gonna go out, and so on. So you can just you know, uh, print this out from the PDF and then maybe actually make a wheel and slowly turn it, which makes tracking all that stuff really easy and cool looking. Got some new magic items, just like in Barrow Maze. We have a system of teleportation through henge gates that can take you uh, in and out of the dungeon if you figure out how they work. Otherwise, you're gonna have to walk through on foot. We have these runic uh, staffs basically that control how, uh, here we go, how the gates are locked and unlocked. You need to collect different types of rings and slot them together in different combinations and like turn them to different runes. It's really cool. You actually feel like you're fiddling with a magical device. And as you understand it better and better, you gain more access to different parts of the dungeon, or at least it becomes easier to access them. We've got some new spells here, a wide variety of new monsters, all of which are illustrated just like in Barrow Maze. Nice big bestiary. Uh, some special monsters. These are the, some of the big bads you might come across. We got these sort of undead, you know, spiny floating guys that come after you. Got some rival adventuring parties, just like in Barrow Maze. That always spices things up when you can run into them. Like two and a half man. They all have goofy names for the most part. The dirty rotten scoundrels. There's one called the Inglorious Bastards, for example. We got some pre-generated characters. We got a wide variety of uh, random tables, including the random monster tables. And we got our illustration book, just like in Barrow Maze. Lots of little handouts that you can give to players when they come across something especially interesting to further immerse them in the world. And that is it. So uh, pluses and minuses for Forbidden Caverns of Archaea. Um, one of the minuses is that it's less thematically unified, I would say, than Barrow Maze is, but that can be a plus for other people who want a lot more variety and chances to talk and negotiate. Um, some of the moving around and some of the things you have to track are a little bit more fiddly. Like you need to track things like uh, when things might collapse um, on top of you know random encounters, which are a bit fiddly with all the different tables you have to roll on to generate the, the different um, 
traveling bands of monsters. But most of that can be smoothed over with either online tools, like I said, or using that wheel, which really simplifies a lot of the timing that you have to track. So all in all, it looks like a really cool um, mega dungeon. There's a links down in the description below, as usual, to our uh, drive through RPG, where you can pick this up for yourself. And if you have played it before, please let me know. I'm really excited about starting my own mega dungeon or running one, not necessarily making one at some point in the future. So I'm really curious to hear about other people's experiences. Before we wrap up here, I'd like to especially thank all of the new patrons that have been joining me on Patreon. There's been a huge influx recently. I'm not totally sure what happened, but we are rapidly approaching the $500 mark. I'd like to especially thank Ryan Massett and Zach for pledging at the questing night level. Uh, you guys are awesome. You're doing a, a huge benefit to the channel. And next time, we are going to be checking out Mega Dungeon, which is a new zine. I haven't done a zine review in quite a while since I've done a worm skin, but I'm really excited to look at this one. This is created by Courtney Campbell, who runs the fantastic Hack and Slash blog. So join me on Wednesday and check it out. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys later.